thank you for letting us present during the Type Weekend conference. We are happy to share with you our presentation. Type design has become a one-person activity. One can easily do it all, research, design and production. Although it is possible to work in full autonomy, we have been working together over the last year as a duo. That is us at work. <laughs> we believe in collaborative work. Sol has been involved in the Tipush Tam Tish organization in Berlin. We are both members of Alphabets. Sol is involved with the Alpha Crit. When Amélie has been enrolled as a mentor within the mentorship program, Amélie has been also helping out the Type Crit crew and Sol the Glyph tutorials. We both love to connect with other people involved or interested in type. We also really like the Slack cre created by Erin McLaughlin that focuses on Indian writing system. It is called the Unicode Slack and is open to anyone and everyone. If you want to join, you are mostly welcome. Today, we are sharing with you our experience on developing our first OEA typeface. Here is a quick summary about the Indian subcontinent linguistic scenery. Indian counts about 780 living languages, 66 writing systems, and throughout the various states of India, you find 31 official languages. 29 of them are spoken by more than a million people. Amongst them, you can find the Oriya, official language of the Odisha state. It is spoken by approximately 35 million natives, and 4 million people are using it as a second language. In comparison, Greek is used by approximately 13 million people. Here is an overview of how the Oriya writing sys system looks. The system is a syllabary or a syllabic alphabet. The letters, the main one, are divided between the independent vowels, the consonant and the dependent vowels. The dependent vowels are, the, are alternative shapes to the independent vowels. Um, the alternative shapes when they are combined to the consonant. The oria has also their own figures and fractions, but those are not used as, as often as they used to, and the Latin figures are also very heavily used now, nowadays. And all these letters have their own way to combine, and I will show you some examples of these combinations. For example, here I would like to show you the combinations between consonant and vowels. On the first line is a very simple combination between the consonant ka and the vowel a. When they are being combined, one follows the other to create the phoneme ka. The second line is showing the consonant ka with a vowel e. When those two are combined, the e is becoming this dependent vowel that is going to float above the consonant ka. On the last line, the third line, you see a consonant, always the consonant ka, with the, with the independent vowel u. When those two are combined, the u turns into a below mark attached to the consonant ka. All these combinations have to be uh, encoded inside a Noria typeface. This is very important to have the good rendering of those in order to provide a legible tool for the users. Then we are going to look at some other kind of combination and those are the consonant to consonant. Those are also called the conjuncts. On the first line, you can see that I have switched the plus sign into a halen sign. 
The Highland sign is a small little dash below the letters. This is a joiner. This sign is allowing the two consonants to merge into each other. So, let's go back to the first line. We have the consonant ka and then the consonant ha. When they merge thanks to this Halen sign, they become kha, and the letter ha turns into this horizontal below line attached to the consonant ka. On the second line, we have the consonant ka followed by the consonant cha. In between, you again have this Halen sign. When they merge, a new sign appears. And this is a sort of combination, this sort of um, conjunct that we have uh, in the Oriya script, like in many other writing systems in India. On the last line, I wanted also to show you that you don't have only combination of two consonants, but sometimes it could be a combination of three of them. And here you have this Highland sign appearing in between each consonant. So we have the consonant ka followed by the consonant ta and the last one is the consonant ha. All together they will create the phoneme ktra. And this is again a new shape that has to be created and encoded. To sum up, the Aurelia script is a dynamic one. And all this letter, all this combination have to be properly encoded in order to convey a legible text. The Orilla community is encountering real problems with the compatibility of their fonts. For example, the Sarala font is not Unicode compatible. Subashish Panigrahi has been developing a Unicode Orilla converter to allow the reassignment of the Unicode values to those Sarala glyphs. Without this, this converter, one user gets a lot of TOEFL. That is exactly what the Noto project is fighting against. Google has been developing a font family called Noto, which aims to support all languages with an harmonious look and feel. Noto is Google's answer to TOEFL. The name Noto is to cover the idea that Google's goal is to see no more tofu. Marek, Jesiorek and Dave Crossland have asked us to develop a new Aurelia font family for Notosan. The brief was to create a font family Unicode compatible, but also outline compatible to allow the generation of a variable fonts. Previously, Google had already commissioned an Aurelia font family to monotype. This family consisted of two weights, regular and bold. We were asked to design a larger and wider family made of four weights across three different widths. The backward compatibility between the monotype work and our work wasn't required. We started our research by studying some existing fonts we could find. Those references have been a great help for us to understand better the sense of the original letters. We were able very quickly then to define our weight axis according to the existing Latin and Bengali. Our challenge here was to match the color of the Bengali Notosan, specifically the bolder weight. Those are the letters we designed for the Oriya, the first one. It's a small collection of independent vowels, dependent vowels, and consonant. The special combinations, the conjuncts, were not yet uh, the, on the drawing board. They will be seen on a later stage. Here we can see how the new Noto Sans Oriya compares to the previous Oriya. During our research, we found out that users of the previous Noto Oriya preferred rounded sh rounder shapes, and that is why the width of the new Oriya is significantly wider. We also had in mind that we had to create more widths for the family. 
After getting in touch with uh, a few Oriya native type aficionados, we exchanged more specifically with Pratyush Das and Nassim Ali on the development of our Oriya pro project. For this consultancy, we have developed test documents with specific questions we had. We then send them, for example, here to Pratyush, our main cons consultant. He sent us back his extensive feed feedback. His comments were extremely valuable and helpful for our project. We were then able to move on quickly onto the second stage of the project, which was the definition of the width axis. We defined this width axis against the Latin counterpart. The production stage also started with the glyph naming. All the conjunct had to be looked at again in order to fully understand what was needed or not. Here is a printout of the Nirmala font conjunct list that was a great reference for us. We also wanted to name our glyphs, all our conjunct, in accordance to what Glyphs app does with glyph naming. However, some aspects of the Oriya syntax stay rather obscure to us. The Unicode Slack was very helpful here for us. We were able to ask our questions and we received very quick answers. Subhashish Panigrahi, the developer of the Salala converter, was actually someone who helped us understanding better the syntax of the Oriya. The production went on with the development of the features. Many of them had to be written by hand. We also had to clarify our glyphs list and all of this came together, but we were also going bananas. <laughs> Slowly but surely, we started uh, debugging the font family by comparing uh, our production with other existing font. That was of great help. And here you can see in pink where the problems are and in blue what is, what is, where is our intention, what we are aiming to. And yeah, by comparing and by studying other production files, we were able slowly to resolve all our problems. Step by step, we were able to understand all those issues in collaboration with the Glyps developers, Georg and Rainer. That way, Georg was able to understand better how the ORIA script works and improve the automation of the ORIA features. In our final file, our final Glyphs file, almost all the features are automatically generated thanks to the work previously done with Georg and Rainer. This is a little bit our way to give back to the community. Future designers will be able then to pick up easily the ORIA script following the Glyph app definition. The Glyph list on the left is sorted and all the features can be now automatically generated, almost all of them. A tutorial on how to develop an Aurea font will be soon published on the Cliffs website, so stay tuned. This is what we have done. This is our first Aurea font family. Please do not hesitate to send feedback onto the Noto GitHub if you have any comments, because after all, it is a work in progress. Notosan is a collection of fonts developed by a variety of people, all collaborating together. These fonts are freely available to all. This project was not just a duo, but an orchestra. It was all of us working together. Thank, Thank you, you all. all.